hello once again. It is nostalgia time once more, and we are returning to the Inspiron Latitude and Vostro. And with the Vostro, on the other hand, however, it's so far been on a very good note getting it all ready. So, so as I get everything all set here, we're going to do that later because there are a few things we still have to do. We're going to return to the Inspiron Resource CD, the CD for this specific machine. So we're going to continue installing the drivers for this computer. There are only three drivers that we still have to do. Second, there are also a few other things that we have to take care of. And it's on this USB right here. All right, so now I gotta remember what those drivers were. This is the, one of the last remaining drivers. The other one we still have to do is the touchpad and the display, the graphics driver. That's the other driver we still need to do. So for those who remember from the last episode, we reinstalled Windows 7 on the Inspiron. However, the addition we got was RTM. This is the original release to manufacturing build of Windows 7, released in 2009. We cannot upgrade from Windows 7 RTM directly to the latest version of Windows 10. The only way we can do that though, is we have to first install Service Pack 1, which is right here. That's Service Pack 1 of Windows 7. We're gonna be installing that before we do the upgrade, but first we're gonna finish the drivers. Now this Vostro folder I have here, I was successfully able to obtain the required documentation for the Dell Vostro Recovery and Restore USB. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to install the tool for it. And make sure the drive is completely empty because it's going to be wiped when we're done. And now there is a Dell Audio option. So let's find the headphone jack, which is right here. And let's see what kind of options we get. Now, just like on the Vostro, we should be getting options that say, what device did you plug in? Did you plug in like line in or anything like that? Several episodes ago, we upgraded this to Windows 10 from the factory installation of Windows 7. And then after I discovered that there was a TV tuner driver installed and then I wanted to roll it back to Windows 7. And then when I went to try and start the recovery, the recovery options portion of the OS is corrupted, which explains that error. So I had done some intense research trying to figure out and I see if I reformat the system reserved partition and all that stuff. But the recovery op, well, even though the recovery options don't work, the actual OS does start normally. What we have been trying to do is undoing the damage that Windows 10 has done. Because what I want to do is create recovery disks. Because when we did recovery media in episode 7, I only created a USB flash drive, not CDs. And so we did a repair, we tried to repair and install of Windows 7, it did kind of work. However, though, just like the Inspiron, this is RTM Windows 7 Professional. So until we get Service Pack 1 installed on this installation, it is now impossible to upgrade it back to Windows 10. So now that I found the files that we need to start the recovery and now that this has all of the requirements for this tool to work 
it should detect the recovery partition and we should be able to roll it back to the factory installation of Windows 7, which will be Service Pack 1. And after we do that, then we should be able to create the recovery disks, which we will then use to restore the system. So we'll go ahead and take that out and we'll uh, connect it to the Vostro. Now we have to boot from it. So we're gonna shut it down. So we're gonna turn it on. We're gonna press F12 because that's the boot key on these Dells. Because on these Dell machines, that's the boot key. We want the USB storage device. Same process as before, English. And then we accept the agreement. I don't see the mouse, there it is. We had it for a moment, uh, so it can go through the license agreement. So we'll accept. We gotta scroll the way down and hit continue. Now, before we move any further, if it's going to ask me to plug it in, I'm going to go ahead and do so. Because it's going to need a lot of power to perform this. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start. Alright, no errors. Let's move on. Attempting to repair the drives. Okay, so it has repaired the boot files. Well, it didn't do what it did. I can see the message, so no, it did not work. So that actually does mean then I have to go to a last resort, which is to once again use the OS CD to recreate the system reserved partition on the, on the computer. All right, so I tried following through uh, with that thing to repair the boot manager and everything else on the system. And so far, and it has not worked. All right, so booting off the flash drive a second time, I guess it's past the boot section. So while it looks like it has repaired the boot files, we're going to use this tool to restore the recovery partition on the hard drive. Now, even without data save, we should still be able to do it. All right, the touchpad driver is ready to go. The graphics are ready to go. And while it does its work, we're going to go ahead and install Service Pack 1. Will not take effect until you restart. Oh, what is this, 32-bit? Must have downloaded the 32 instead of the 64. All right, well, we are going to skip this part. This could be good news. It's reinstalling the operating system. All right, that worked. But let's see if it's the factory image. So that's it. That's all it took. Just needed the Dell recovery and restore. And now it's back on the factory image. And there's the out-of-box experience, exactly as it was when it was first purchased. That is amazing. I'm going to take out the USB of Windows 10. And we'll go ahead and start the installation of Service Pack 1. Okay. And here we go. Installing Service Pack 1 on the Inspiron. And now back to the Vostro, everything has been restored. That is amazing. So, yep, you know, we go through the out-of-box experience and we're gonna use the same username that we used before. And now, since this will be a permanent installation, we're gonna name it Vostro1540. We're not gonna set a password. And then of course, these are the license terms for Windows 7 and Dell. Gotta accept both. We're gonna use recommended settings because the Windows Update servers still work on this copy of Windows 7. And there it is, there is the Dell software screen. Uh, sure, you can receive updates. Yes, you can go and receive usage data. And finish. All right, and in just a moment, we will be at the desktop. And there it is exactly as it was 
on January 30th, 2012, when the Recovery Media was created. And of course, we don't have an internet connection, but that is normal. And I will show you that this is Windows 7 Service Pack 1. And I already see the experience index was already rated. We had to re-rate it because we went back to Windows 7 after we upgraded from 10, which I know we're not doing again until we create media, actual media. So there it is, Vostro 1540. It's got the license key on the system. And I'll show you under my computer. And there it is, Windows 7 Home Premium Service Pack 1. And since we had professional, it does not say get more features with the new edition of Windows 7. So again, the recovery was successful. However, we need to get the, we still, however, need to get it to detect the recovery partition, which is what we're trying to do. Cannot be installed because your hard drive does not have the Windows recovery environment. So while it may have restored the system to the factory installation, it did not restore the Windows recovery environment, which is our problem. Okay, so now I figured out why the recovery environment was not loading. It's because the winre.wim file is missing. Okay, so on the previous installation that I did, I used the CD I have of Windows 7 Professional Service Pack 1. The CD that I used previously was RTM. That was a home premium RTM CD that I used, which also has Windows 7 Home Basic, Professional, Ultimate, and Home Premium all on it. This is 7 Pro. Sure. Go ahead and start the protection. I'm not going to need it. Okay. So, we need to restore that WIM file. So we're going to go to CMD. we got to run the command prompt as an administrator. Okay. And now, we need to locate the installation files. So, we do DISM, get WIM info, WIM file, D sources install dot win. So that's going to obtain the information on that's going to obtain the info on the file. So these are all the additions. Now index three right there is Windows 7 Professional, which is our addition. Before we move any further, however, we cannot do it on a flash drive or anything else of that nature. So in order for it to work, we're going to need to create a new partition on the hard drive. What we're going to do is we're going to shrink the volume. We are going to shrink it down by 16,000 megabytes, which is equivalent to 16 gigs. So we're going to go ahead and shrink that. So we're going to need a new volume. We're going to give it the letter of E. In a format and it'll attach the partition and it is now visible in Explorer. All right, and we are going to create a new folder in this directory and I'm actually going to name it backup because this will contain the backup files. So now that we have everything we need, we need to do DISM mount WIM. And then we open up the WIM file from the installation disk. Index colon three, colon three being Windows 7 Professional. If we're doing this on Windows 7 Home Premium, it would be two and so on and so forth. Then we mount it using mount dir to that folder we just created, E backup, and then we tell it to read only. And I 
and we'll pull the explore window up there you go all of the files from the disk are being copied to this folder on this partition of the hard drive so now we go to that folder we go to system 32 and then recovery you can see there's the re wim file on the disk and this file needs to be in the c drive in order to access the recovery so we need to copy it to the recovery folder on the hard drive. We should have successfully restored the Windows recovery environment. So now that we're done, we need to unmount the image. So we go to, so, so we do DISM unmount, WIM for WIM, mount directory, and then we specify the directory where it's all stored and then we tell it to discard. So it's removing the files from the E drive. However, there are gonna be certain files that are left on the drive after this is done. We could end up with two copies of Windows 7 Professional. One copy would be from Dell, and the other copy would be just the generic copy from Microsoft. So now that we're done with this drive, we're gonna go ahead and delete the volume. So there we go. Now we need to delete the partition to make it unallocated. And now we extend the volume back. This will restore the original. So this will now make this the primary partition. We've been doing all that work. It still is not detecting the recovery partition. It still does not help us. There is actually an option you could use to reinstall Windows However, it may not work. So I'm gonna keep that flash drive in hand, ready to go. We have the option that says, restore your computer or reinstall Windows. We do advanced recovery methods. I have a Windows installation disk, which is in the drive. Yes. Do you wanna back up your files? No, we will not. And now we are ready to start the restoration and when we try to do it we get the boot selection failed error but then we again have options to boot into windows 7. yes we want to create system recovery media now we're gonna do it right now what i think this thing would be which explains that problem we were having is that it came at most likely two models and this model has the built-in tv tuner drivers because when, we, because when I was looking up the drivers for the security tag specifically, it mentioned that there was a Dell digital TV tuner card inside of the machine. So therefore, I could use it to receive live TV channels and everything else of that nature. So before we move any further, we need to first install a proper web browser so then we can start installing other programs. One of the programs I will commonly use is OBS. Next, we need Audacity. The patch file is not compatible. Hmm, that's that had a data safe icon. Then we should be able to get audio options that say, hey, yep, there it is. Which device did you plug in? I can tell it microphone or line in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install the player. And then we're going to start the installation of Audacity. Okay, install it. We need Visual Studio 2015 in order for that to work. So this version is not compatible with Windows 7. And in addition to that, we need an antivirus. And one that will possibly work the best is Avast. This is probably because it's running on an older an older version of Windows Update. So that means we're gonna need another repository. Okay, so unfortunately, it looks like we will not be able to do like everything all at once. So, while we have been able to once again successfully restore the system back to the factory state, unfortunately, the only way we will be able to access the recovery partition on the hard drive 
is through this USB. But at least the good thing out of this is that we got the Inspiron up and up to date with Windows 7. We got it up to Service Pack 1. However, there are still a few things that need to be done. So far, it's been a very, very bumpy ride for this computer, but its work is not done yet. We still have a ton of setup to do, but let me be honest, we still, we still have to get a lot of things set up on this computer, but we are slowly making our way there. And we will continue with that work next time. So, until then, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.